Hey everyone, mango 7 roll here. How we doing today? Welcome to another episode of Epic 7, and this is going to be a Chatterino episode. We're going to chat a little bit specifically about the direction they're heading with uh, specific units. Uh, I guess specifically spec change units, and what it means for the future, and what are people's thoughts on it, basically. Basically, we're just going to talk all about element style stuff. So anything that kind of requires a specific element. So uh, let's take a look at the first one here. And the reason why I'm doing this video is in generally just feedback because I have seen so many people, so many people just immediately see that uh, it requires a specific element or it's effective against a specific element and just say, nope, I'm not doing that. And for good reason too, I, I don't think they're really designing these right. So maybe we can get some ideas together. You can leave them in the comments down there below. Or if you like my ideas, uh, that's another thing. So let's take a look at Rima right now. Rima was a character we were all excited for. I, I At least I was excited for. Um, and we can preview the spec change here. And we can see... Uh, I'm not sure which ones they are here. We'll find them. Uh, let's take a look at Solitude Rune. When using a quick shot... If all allies are ice elemental heroes, has a 100% chance to uh, increase the combat readiness of the ally with the highest attack by 5%. Um, I, I think this perfectly describes what's wrong with their design philosophy towards these styles of units. 5% combat readiness? If they're all ice elemental? That's ridiculous. 5% is like virtually nothing and not going to change anything. Uh, so... One of the things I want to get across here is that I personally, again, opinionated. Um, don't don't be mad if I, I, I have a wrong opinion or different opinion than you. Uh, it's just what I think. And personally, I think they should really have a usable kit, usable to good kit, not top tier, but really good kit regularly. And then they should be essentially, in quotes, bonkers in the perfect team full of all ice elemental heroes. So what that would mean for this is uh, it would just, in general, increase the combat readiness of the ally with a higher attack, probably more than 5% by base, because 5% is stupid. <laughs> and uh, once they have um, full ice, it should be something a little bit more substantial, maybe like 25% or something like that. You know, some sort of boost that's not super OP, but actually noticeable for using Ice Elemental Heroes and makes it so you want to use them because of that. We also have, uh, there's more here. Um, when using Lullaby Arrow, if all heroes or all allies are Ice Elemental Heroes, has a 100% chance to decrease defense of the target for two turns. This is a really good one. This is the perfect example of something that's really good to have Mono Element. Unfortunately, it's on her Lullaby Arrow, which is her skill two. Had this been on her skill one, it would be amazing, absolutely amazing to have that tacked onto there and be worth using an all ice elemental team. Unfortunately, maybe not the best on this because uh, it's on a higher cooldown. It's on uh, attached with a sleep debuff. Um, there's just so many things that don't really make sense. I see what they're trying to do here. What they're trying to do is make her have an ability for PvE since most PvE bosses uh, can't be slept. They're having a, uh, a debuff on that skill too to make it worthwhile to use. But still, um, that would be a good switch there. But a really good example of something I would like to see on a full elemental team. We, I think that's all for her, right? For elementals? Nope, there's one more. When using Hopeful Him, if all allies are ice elemental heroes, it's a 100% chance to increase the speed of the target for two turns. Another really good example here. I feel like this is super lacking. Um, this is almost something that should just be in the base kit for a spec change unit. And for a full ice elemental team, this should probably just increase the speed of everybody on the team for two turns. Possibly even do something else. Uh, so that's another thing to consider here. Because I, I think if you do just those two changes, and it's not about the specific changes. It's about adding more than what it is, right? Uh, I think she becomes amazing. Like... For example, had you release Muse uh, Rima and put her defense break on her skill one and made this AoE, she would be insanely good. People would love using her and love building her. 
but instead they just do these like marginal increases that nobody really cares for and nobody will build her for except for content creators so that's just something to consider uh, let's take a look at another character um too long didn't watch on that one is basically like they could have went a long way with her and made it awesome let's take a look at uh carmen rose and i can't remember if <laughs> why do i always do that i can't remember if carmen rose is specifically all units or just uh against a specific target I think it's just against a specific target. Yeah, so uh, when attacking increases effectiveness by 20% if the target is an Earth Elemental Hero. While this is good here, um, let me see how much effectiveness she gets. Uh, ba -ba -da -ba, ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. When attacking increases the effectiveness by 30%. Okay, so we're getting there here. So uh, one thing... I think about specific units, uh, let's use again Carmen Rose as an, ex as an example since so what we're doing, is making it so she doesn't need a specific stat when attacking a specific style of unit. And the thing here is we have 20% and 30%, so a total of 50% effectiveness added on to her kit, which is not enough. It's not going to really do much. So to make her specifically useful in the situation you're wanting to use her for, Perhaps instead of having two different abilities like this, make it so um, attacks against fire elemental heroes ignore effect resistance. That way, you can hit those high ER targets without fail. You can even hit the um, non-high ER targets that just resist every time anyway, like Charles, not fail. And I think that's another way to have made her a lot more useful because... When I built Carmen Road, she was so, and again, especially because these are specially chained units that have low base stats, especially mages, I just really struggled getting my stats up there, and 50% effectiveness wasn't enough. You know, like, it's not enough for unable to be debuffed, uh, decreasing speed. I think she has a, I'm, I'm <laughs> I did it again. <laughs> uh, I'm not super hundred percent familiar with all of the runes, but I thought she had another, um, debuff added here, unhealable as well. So that is, that is, uh, four. Uh, four, five. Yeah, that is five debuffs on our kit from what I counted. I might be wrong there. Maybe it's four. That's not enough. 50% effectiveness is not enough on a character who also wants to do damage. So let's take a look at another one that probably flopped a lot too. Um, actually, let's take a look at one that didn't. And that's Magical Scholar Doris. So if we take a... I didn't hit it. I didn't hit it. We take a look at her she's another one that doesn't have an all light but has specific things against another element um so if we take a look at solitude rune has a uh, recovers health of all allies by two percent after being attacked by a dark elemental enemy this is awesome perhaps a little bit more could be better but at the same time she's got such a good kit, good kit that this is okay and this kind of lets you predictively heal your team which is great but unpredictably healing your team or supporting your team is this one. 10% chance to increase defense of all allies by one turn. Um, I'm not sure about this one. I like the idea of it, but I think it's a way too low cooldown. Especially if we look at her uh, skill 2 here. Her skill 2 does grant increased defense for two turns. So it's kind of over... I knew I couldn't get through this. <laughs> so it's kind of over doing it, you know? Like you've already got defense up the majority of time and her burn extends buffs as well, right? If we go here, like imagine if this was, I don't know, like 50% or 100% for one turn. And that might sound overpowered, but at the same time, I don't really think it is because that way uh, she helps protect herself first turn. So when she gets hit by a Rylet or a... RB first turn, she has defense up before she goes, and that makes her super, super, super great. Um, but 10%, it's never proccing ever, and when it does, you might already have defense buff. So there's so many things there that could have been better. And Harvest Rune here has a 100% chance to decrease damage suffered from a critical hit by 30%. Absolutely awesome. This is perfect. Predictable and amazing to use her against Dark. So you like specifically actively want to use uh, her against dark units. I think this is a very successful version 
of mono element teams. Um, let's take a look at not a spec change, but everybody's favorite girl, also known as my favorite, second, third favorite girl, uh, Kawana. So we actually don't even need to go there. Uh, we have three different things here for Kawana, uh, specifically the two that have fire ele elemental effects. For one thing, um, attacks all enemies with a flame guardian before increasing the attack of all allies for two turns. When all allies are fire elemental hero, grants attack or grants all skill. Oh, Mango, sometimes you're so bad at reading. I'm dyslex dyslexic too. Don't blame me. When all allies are fire elemental heroes, grants all allies skill nullifier once. So let's take a look at this ability. If you take out when all allies are fire elemental heroes, it's still not the greatest. It's good, but it's not the greatest. And if you look at Rough Welcome here, when all fire or while well, all allies are fire Ellie heroes, increases combat readiness of all allies by 20%. So let's say you take out when all allies are fire elemental heroes from this and this, combined with kind of a lackluster skill one in terms of damage, um, combined with just a weird kit, combined with base stats as well. She's got uh Pretty low HP and defense, but fast speed, obviously. She's got a pretty decent base stats. But basically, you take out that restriction, and you still don't really use her, right? Like, nobody really still uses Kawana at that point. I would, um, and I'd have a lot of fun with it, but she still wouldn't be good. So, I feel like something like this is another perfect example where we can throw in whatever she does now. Just pretend she does everything without Fire Elemental Heroes now. And then... When she has all fire ele ele elemental heroes, just go overboard, you know, make it so she's really, really good in that situation. Because let's face it, if you're using all fire elemental heroes against another team in RTA, they're going to pick a bunch of ice units. Trust me, they are. They're going to pick F10. They're going to pick um, Cerise. They're going to pick SSB. They're going to pick so many ice units. It's frustrating. They're going to pick Kral. Ah, I lost so much to that. Um... So you need it to be really good if you restricted yourself. So maybe doing something that solves some of the problems she has against regular teams to this. One of the problems she has is too many counterattacks, get rid of skill nullifier, and she dies. So perhaps um, grants all allies skill nullifier twice, which sounds OP, but is it really with an all fire team? And if we look at rough welcome as well, when all allies are fire Ellie, Heroes uh, increases combat readiness of all allies by 20%. Perhaps if you do this uh, with all fire instead, um, it ignores effect resistance or something like that. That way you're guaranteeing the dispel and the stun on that one target. And is that OP? I, I honestly don't think so. And at that point, you still have to consider using her because of all fire heroes. And let's take a look at one more. Um, one of the earliest... Is it the earliest spec change? Um, which is mascot Hazel here. Somebody I had high hopes for, but it gets outshadowed by uh, Tamarin. We have, uh, let's take a look. I'm not going to do it. We have, which rune is it? Which rune is it? Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. Increases the caster's combat readiness when using urgent regen by 10% if it's a fire hero. That's not enough. Make it good. Make it usable. Make it, you want to do that. Flip in Tamarin increases the CR by everybody by 50%. You know, like, why? Why why do something so minuscule? And if we look at the next one here, uh, ba -ba -da -ba. if the ally is a fire elemental hero when using a girl in uniform, give some continuous healing with a 20% chance. Like, no! No! Why 20%? Give it a 100% chance. It's still not super good, you know? Still good, but still not super good. Still not better than Tamarin. Why, why restrict it like this? And if we take a look at this, increases effectiveness of all fire elemental allies by 10%. You know, it's good, but come on. You gotta get more than this. Uh, you get my idea. I'm just ranting at this point because I really want to use Hazel. And this one is actually pretty sweet. Just a straight up attack percent increase to all fire Ellie heroes. And um. I'm trying to find this. There we go. There's another one. When the target is a fire Ellie hero, grants the target increased attack greater instead. So, to make her much better, you know, 
one of the problems with her is her healing output. She doesn't have enough healing output. So if you tack on that continuous 100% of the time on urgent regen, you're pretty fantastic, right? It's still only single target. That's still not enough, but still good, still better. Um, and if you really want to go out of the way, you could have it AoE instead, which I think still wouldn't be OP if they're all fire units. And if we look at this one here, when the target is a fire element hero, this is actually kind of different because this does hit the one target with greater attack. Um, but it still could be better. It could boost the CR or something like that as well. You could fit something specifically with a theme, a girl in uniform, where she's like tricking them to do something to add something specifically to that. Anyways, I've been talking for too long. This is just kind of my rant about how they're handling mono elemental heroes and what kind of missed opportunities they're 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 missing because of this. Uh, because I think they can be some of the most fun and ingen ingenuitive. Is that the right word? Innovative units in the game, but instead they end up falling flat basically every time, um, which is just really unfortunate. You know, like adding another dimension to guild war to arena to rta to pve that makes it so you don't just use arby and rylet every time because they're just too good you might end up using like kawana and hazel together and saul and um lilius for example just to throw four out there because they end up being better than arby in certain situations uh, just as a random example um so yeah thank you so much for watching Feel free to like, comment, subscribe. Let me know in the comments below, and I'll talk to you all later. Bye, everybody.